All right, kind of a challenging one coming up here. Our goal is to expand this using the properties of logarithms. So we have log base two of the fraction x squared minus two x minus eight all over x squared minus four x. And I've listed out the properties of logarithms to the right hand side that are gonna help us. We have the product rule, the quotient rule and the power rule for, for logarithms. Um, the first thing I notice is that we do have a fraction going on. So that may point me towards, let's use the quotient rule to start expanding. So if we do so, what we're gonna do is we get log base two. The numerator is gonna go in the first one, x squared minus two x minus eight. And from there, we're gonna subtract off the logarithm base two again, because that's how it started with the denominator inside this set. This is not the only way to go through the problem, but that's the first thing most students notice is we have a fraction. So let's use the quotient rule. All right, the next thing we'd like to do is we're thinking, how do we expand this any further? Well, to expand this any further, there is a chance that we can make this into a product on the inside. So two things multiplied together on the inside of the logarithm. To do so, what we need to do is do a little bit of factoring. So I think we can factor these. Let's factor this as log base two, and then big set of parentheses here on the inside, I believe that will split up as X and X for the X squared. We'll use two and four for the eight, positive two minus four. From that, we're supposed to subtract off log base two. And again, big set of parentheses. I think we can factor X squared minus four. Those have a common factor of X. So let's factor that out. That'll leave us with X minus four inside the set of parentheses. From here, we have written this, so we have a couple products. Okay, on the inside here, these are being multiplied on both of these um, inside the logarithm. So we're allowed to split those apart using the product rule. What that's gonna look like is we have log base two of X plus two plus log base two of X minus four. Then we're supposed to subtract off. Now I'm gonna be careful here and I'm gonna use brackets because I'm gonna replace that log base two with the X and the X minus four, both on the inside with something that's equivalent, um, but it's all supposed to be subtracted off from the initial logarithms. All right, so as we split that apart, it's gonna look like log base two of X plus log base two of X minus four, according to the product rule over on the right-hand side. However, you really wanna be careful here because that's a negative or a negative one sitting out in front that really needs to be applied to both of these. So basically distribute to get rid of your brackets. So now where we're at is we have log base two of X plus two, just bringing that along, same thing, log base two of X minus four, but we've distributed that negative. So we're subtracting away the log base two of X and we're subtracting away log base two of X minus four. Now it may be a good point time to point out, we have a positive log base two of X minus four and a negative log base two of X minus four. So basically those can be combined together and they're gonna cancel each other out. Just like if you're adding two and you're subtracting two, it becomes a net of zero. So as those get to cancel, we're only gonna be left in this case with log base two of X plus two minus log base two of X. Now this isn't the only way you could go about this. If from the very beginning, what you did was you said, I am gonna start out and factor as much as I can. Like start from the very beginning, original problem. You could factor the numerator as just like we did, X plus two, X minus four. And then the denominator has that common factor of X. So after you factor that out, you get your X times X minus four. At this point, you may say to yourself, oh, well, I know about reducing down to lowest terms. If I have an X minus four over an X minus four, that creates a one. You can cancel those out basically from the beginning. And that's probably a little bit faster way to get here. But students tend to struggle when they say, oh, well, it's supposed to be added. Why? Why isn't that positive? Because of that negative that needed to be distributed. All right, so from here to finish this up, if you had done your factoring at the very beginning, you'd say the numerator minus the denominator gets its own log and we get to the exact same answer. All right, hope this was helpful for you. Good luck on this, not an easy one. Keep up.